Hi guys, welcome to the first part in this video series on writing a bare minimum chess program in C. In this video series, I'm going to sh I'm going to show how to write a chess program of about only uh, two hundred and fifty lines of code in C, and this is the entire source code, and this is it. So it's really a tiny program. Here is the line number three uh, hundreds, but if you subtract the upper license part, which takes for about uh, fifty lines here then you would get exactly 250 lines of code in C. And just to say a few words about this project, so this is a, my tribute to chess programming community based on the ideas taken from the Micromax engine by H.G. Miller. And this engine, Micromax, is like a diamond among the chess programs. Its design is uh, really so beautiful that uh, allows you to write a really tiny chess program that actually plays chess. Well, the Micromax is pretty strong, but the program I'm presenting here is much weaker because its purpose it's written more for clarity and educational purposes, not for the strength or speed. And it also aims uh, those programmers, who, those beginners who already knows how to code in C, but has no idea about chess programming at all. So if any real chess programmer, programmers among of those of you who view this video, then you won't be really interested, because it's really like uh, not interesting from the chess strands perspective, but o only for the beginners. And so this is actually what is this written for. So this work is dedicated to hobby programmers who aims to get the very gist of chess programming. And here is another quotation that's actually my experience. So the vague understanding of your goals leads to unpredictable results and abandoning the project halfway. You know, I've been doing chess programming for about three years and uh, I managed to write my very, uh, my very first attempt to write a work in a bug free chess program uh, was after <laughs> for about two years and a half so not very long time ago basically so it took me more than two years to learn chess programming in order to make something working actually and one of the reasons it took me so long time because I did had did have a vague understanding of the goal so I didn't really particularly understand what exactly am I supposed to get as the end result. So when you start doing your chess programming you, you have to have the clear understanding of what exactly you're doing and what for. Uh, now this is a bit of a fun part. It's my uh, usual license. I'm releasing my software under. It's the, like called the do what the fuck you want to public license. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You could read ab about it more details uh, available in this link. And now let's have a little overview of the program we are gonna code itself. So it uses so-called uh, hexadecimal 88 board representation and, and just before starting I, I, I have to mention that the chess program uh, consists of major four parts. It's the board representation, the move generator, the search and the evaluation and all these uh, pieces of the entire engine in this particular implementation are united into the one single search function so the search function is generating moves and it also evaluates them and that's very important from the design perspective and uh, here uh, the, the version by H.G. Muller uh, saves every single character in his original source code which uses uh, one letter variables instead of meaningful ones uh, but uh, it's not really easy to understand that code so I'm using here uh, the uh, I'm here I'm using meaningful variable names and also the 
uh, code is simplified is I in many many times I it's really much more simple compared to the original program it, it, it plays much more poor chess but it's still really useful for beginners to get the very gist of how the things are going on and uh, another uh, thing to mention is some limitations so this particular implementation doesn't in doesn't involve in peasant uh, captures by the pawns and uh, no castling and the promo pawn promotion is limited to queen only uh, that's just to make it more clear uh, and uh, in terms of uh, complexity of the algorithms involved in the mode generator and one another thing to mention one more thing to mention is this project is a part of another bigger project a chess engine in brainfuck which uh, we in the brainfuck community are going to accomplish one day i don't know if this day is ever to happen or ever to come but still uh, before writing a chess engine in brainfuck programming language first we have to like uh, have a C version, a very simplified one. So just bear bear this in mind as well. Uh, that's another reason for these limitations. Well, but forget about uh, chess program in Brainfuck for now. And let's get get back to the particular design and implementation. So the hexadecimal 88 board representation. I don't really want to uh, use a lot of time explaining how exactly this works, but just in terms of practical application, this board representation consists of two parts. It has 64 squares in here to represent the current board position, and another 64 squares are used to store the positional scores. So it means that the pawn, if it stands on e4, it will get the score of 30. So it means that instead of going to e to e3, which only has the 20, it will rather go to cell uh, to uh, the square e to e4 and to get the value of 30 here. But this would be covered later on in the series. And uh, in the move generator, uh, it's uh, one of the most complicated things. Code both code-wise as well as speed-wise is uh, to check the pieces not going off-board. For this is a one-dimensional array in the perspective of the of how computer sees this. And uh, say we do not we do not want uh, if the knight say the knight is twelve, but say the knight is over here. So when we generate a move, we can generate the move where knight will go to this particular square, but it's not allowed because this is off board. And the single uh, expression, like if uh, we bitwise end the square with the constant value of hexadecimal 88, then we can already know whether this square is on board or not. So only one if statement to say whether the piece the destination squared for piece to go is on board or not. So this is very useful and it's very optimized from the code size perspective. Okay, uh, this part is the notation. It's used to convert uh, the square number. Say this is square 0, this is square 16, square 32, 31, uh, 33, 34 and so on. But it's not really uh, convenient to use this number for if you say uh, you have the destination square of 33 you have no idea where the pawn is going but if you see that this is c6 then you can already imagine where particularly this pawn will actually go so also th this is used uh, both in uh, to parse the user input and even more it's useful for the debugging purposes when you bring the move list available of uh, the available moves that are returned by the move generator in order to evaluate I every of these moves and to find the best one. So this notation is really useful. A and this part, it could be omitted basically, but uh, just to make sure that the move generator is working fine. So say if the 
base lands say on square L4 that this means that it's definitely off board then something is wrong with the moon generator so that's another way of uh, how I'm sorry just restart the timer it, it takes some time to explain but this is really necessarily needed in order to understand how the program is working okay so just for the debugging purposes we have this notation array and then uh, two opportunities are possible we can represent or just draw the pieces on board as the ASCII uh, letters like in here so P stands for pawn K is knight N is probably oh no N is oh, b okay bishop oh, B is bishop R is rook Q is queen okay K is a king and N is a knight but it's not really uh, that comfortable to use this notation when you see the position you don't really understand what's going on on the board so the more prettier way of doing things is using the Unicode characters to represent pieces on board and if you're on Linux then this just works nicely I, um, it's shame on me that I don't know how to print Unicode symbols on Windows I don't have a Windows machine so I can't really test this myself and when using uh, a wine an app that runs Windows apps on Linux it doesn't really give the true results so I just can't print Unicode pieces Unicode characters on Windows I don't know how to do this okay now so uh, this program can use both either ASCII, ASCII characters or the Unicode characters and in case of the Unicode characters the real chess pieces are printed instead of the letters on the board. I'll demonstrate this at the end of this video uh, when we'll show how the program written here actually works and then uh, we have some uh, constants for color and uh, this the way to store 8 and 16 for the color is just these are the bits the bit 8 and the bit 16 so the bitwise operations will make it easier to define uh, what is the color of the particular piece and from the code uh, size perspective this is very useful this is the array of the move offsets that uh, how many squares to add or to subtract from the given square in order to get the destination square for the given piece the piece weight stores uh, uh, the value of each chess piece that's fairly self-explanatory either this two variable stores the best uh, from and best to squares uh, source and destination squares uh, when the program returns the best score it also has to return the best move to associate the score to the move and this move is actually is uh, made on the board on the physical board a little debugging function to print the board and the main function of this program is called the search position so uh, it's a recursive function and it evaluates the uh, tree of the moves recursively and when the depth is zero here then he returns the evaluation of the particular position so this is the evaluation function it, it involves material scoring as well as positional scoring and then adds them and returns the value. This would be covered later on in this series. And this is the move generator parts. Uh, the move generator generator consists of three major loops. The loop over both squares, this one, and it finds the pieces. And then he he asks is the, if the piece is mine. Then if it's a bitwise and the piece in the site to find all the white or all the black pieces. And then he makes a loop over the uh, like step vectors in this array over here this array so he, he, he looks uh, all the possible so for the knight uh, there are eight directions for the king also eight for the bishop there are four directions so he just loops over these directions here and finally when he is uh, in the direction say it's a slider piece like a rook that he also has to loop over the squares particular squares and this loop 
is looping over the squares and within this loop we actually must make move if this move is a pawn promotion then we have to uh, make convert the pawn to the queen then we do the recursive call and then we take the move back and then we perform some alpha beta stuff scoring the move so if the move returned the evaluation better than the previous one then this the, uh, the uh, this score is stored as alpha. This is this is going to be covered later on, so just not at this particular moment. Well, and finally, it returns the best score. So uh, this uh, function is actually the topic of the entire video series. So I'm not really going to explain this in much de great details over here. And in the main function, we have the main uh, game loop. So, if we want to play against the computer, and uh, the version we are going to write in this video series would also con contain some debugging loop where the computer would be able to play itself in order to see how the mood generator and the search and the evaluation works, whether it works correctly or not. And here is the simple loop, so it doesn't uh, check for the legality, so you could uh, kind of cheat in this version, you can move any piece to anywhere. Uh, well, that's just probably a bit unfair to the computer, assuming it's playing really poorly, but just for clarity, just uh, trying to write as uh, less code as possible. And then we make the user move, and if this is a pawn promotion, we convert the pawn to the queen, and then the print board. And then we ask the computer to give the best move in the given position. As far as it finds it, we just make this move on the board, and then if this is a pawn promotion, we oh again, we can read the pawn to the queen, and then we change the sign again, and then we bring the board, and bring some debugging for like the score of the position. And if the score is equal to 10,000 and minus 10,000, which stands for the infinity and minus infinity values, then we are in the checkmate, and the game is over, and we break out of this loop. So this is it about the design and the uh, overview of the design and the, in the and the implementation of this program. And now let me just show you how this works in action. So say I enter the move d2, d4. This is the depth 3, so the computer responds quite instantly. So let's move knight b1 to c3. Computer responds, well let's move g2, g3. Okay, now, now put the bishop f1 to g2. Okay, now he's pinning my knight over here, so I have to deal with this somehow, but maybe just I put... I keep on developing my pieces, play knight g1 to f3. So he plays f4. Well, it's not really good from the positional perspective, but this is a very simple chess program, so it's already good if it doesn't give away pieces. Well, it doesn't involve castling, so I can't castle him. Well, but let me just try to show you some exchanges. So I, p I play knight f3 to e5. Okay, and he takes my knight, yeah, and now I take... The evaluation uh, suffers from the great horizon effect. Uh, because there is no quest in search in this particular program, but still you can play chess. So d4 takes on e5. So at least he plays chess. Maybe not th that decent or reasonable you would like it to play, but still this is chess. Okay guys, so this tutorial, this video series is going to cover how uh, basically to implement this sort of a chess program. So I hope this was interesting and if you want to have uh, if you want to write this program yourself then please follow the tutorial and at the end of the tutorial you will have exactly the same program that has been shown in here and you would have the clear under understanding of how particularly it works if not from theoretical then at least from the practical perspective this is it for this video guys thanks for watching and have a good time bye